blood of Jesus will wash it away. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. We come to worship the Lord. Have you no know sin? You will repel him. No hypocrisy in our lives. No unbelief. No doubt. Anything that repels God. That will make your worship to be vain. The blood of the Lamb. The blood of Jesus. We cleanse. We wash. We purge. Open your mouth and pray. And we come before the Lord worshiping him. In the purity of life and heart. You know the Bible says his ears are not heavy, that they will not hear. His hands are not short, that they cannot say. But your sin, your iniquity, is what suppress us from God. Pray that the Lord will cleanse us. As we have fellowship together today, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, will cleanse us from all unrighteousness so that our worship today will be acceptable unto the Lord. That's a good prayer request for you there. That's how to start. As we come into the presence of the Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. We have our brethren and invitees, many of them still on their way coming. And we are going to pray for them. That the Lord who assisted you and I to be here will also assist them to be here in good time. Safe arrival. Open your mouth and pray for them. The Lord will help them clear every obstacle on their way. Those who are waiting for public uh, transport to be here, the Lord will provide for them. That everyone will arrive here safely and in good time. Let's pray there will be no accident on the way. No vehicle breakdown for our brethren coming. Johnny Mercy for everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. We are going to pray and commit the worship uh, service, all the ministers, all those who are going to officiate. First of all, we want to pray for our Father in the Lord that the Lord will grant him renewed anointing, renewed strength. He will speak from the throne of God unto us today in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray for him. Pray for our Father in the Lord. That today, we will hear the word of God coming from him as never before. Message from above that will move us forward in our spiritual 
life, in our spiritual journey. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm going to pray for other officiating ministers in the children's church, in the youth section. I'm going to pray for them in all the sections. The Lord will use them mightily. The spirit of the living God will operate through them. And the anointing and the power of God will back them up. Open your mouth and pray. In Jesus' name we pray. And you know that the service is not only this congregation, but all over the world, this world will be going forth from here. We are going to pray that this day, the purpose of today's message will be fulfilled in the life of every hearer. Sinners will be converted. Backsliders will be restored. Those who are cold and lukewarm will catch the fire. We want to pray that today the power of God will back up the message that goes from here all over the world in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray. Commit every hearer today to the hand of the Lord. The purpose of the word of God, the purpose of the message will be accomplished in the life of every hearer. Amen. Finally, you are going to pray for yourself. The Lord is going to speak to his church today. You are going to pray. You know, when the message is going on, there could just be one sentence that will move you forward in your Christian life, that will transform your life. But then you need to pray that when that sentence will come, when that statement will come, you will not be sleeping. You will be awake. And everything God has for you today, you will receive in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray. Amen. It is done. Father, we thank you today. We bless your name for the opportunity and the privilege we have we will be in your house this day of the Lord. And we ask you, O oh Lord, that everything we have asked now in prayer, you will do for us in Jesus' name. We ask, O oh Lord, that in the service of this day, you alone will be glorified. You alone will be exalted. And as Christ is exalted, Lord, you will draw men unto yourself in Jesus' name. Take control from the beginning to the end of the service. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We remain standing as we sing together. We are singing from 
our gospel hymns and songs, number 185. Gospel hymns and songs, number 185. The thing my God doth hate, that I no more, I no more may do. Thy creature, Lord, again great, and all my soul renew. My soul shall then, like thine, abhor the thing unclean, and sanctify by love divine, forever cease from sin. That blessed love thine, Jesus, to me impart, the spirit's law of life divine, oh, write it in my heart. Soul of my life remain, who this for all fulfill in me, O oh Lord, fulfill again thy heavenly Father's will. Bless us as we look at your word together this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are welcome to the study scripture class of today in Jesus' name. Last week we looked at lesson 68, Strange Fire 
in the tabernacle. And in that lesson, we learned a lot of things. And among the things we learned is that God expects us to worship him on his own terms and according to his specification that we saw through the punishment that Nadab and Abihu received for choosing to serve God how they fell. They brought strange fire and they were punished. Secondly, we saw also that believers are expected to continually please God and seek his glory over their personal circumstances. That we learned from the instruction that Moses gave to Aaron and son and his son that despite the death of Nadab and Abihu as a result of punishment, that they were to remain committed to serving the Lord. We also saw God's warning against strong drink. And we learned from that that children of God are not to take, produce, or distribute alcohol or any intoxicating substance, including drugs, recreational drugs, hard drugs, whatever. Finally, we learned that Jesus Christ is the sacrifice for our sins and the altar for our sacrificial love and service to God. I pray that all that we learned in that lesson will bear fruit in our lives in Jesus' name. This morning, we're looking together at the topic, Sundry Laws of Purification. Can we say it together? Can we say it better? Sundry Laws of Purification. Is there any volunteer to help us with our memory verse? Any volunteer to help us with our memory verse? Yes, sister, please come to the microphone quickly. And while she's doing that, Pastor Perry Azimi, please, you will help us with our text today. So get ready. Leviticus 11, verse 45. For I am the Lord that bringeth you out of the land of Egypt. Therefore, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Thank you. Let's turn our Bibles there together. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 45. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 45. Let's take it together. One, two, go. For I am the Lord that bringeth you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Our text today is taken from Leviticus chapter 11, from verse 1 to 47 and 12, 1 to 8. But because of our time, we will take some selected verses. Is Pastor Perry there? If he's there, let, it, let him take chapter 11 from verse 1 to 4. Leviticus 11, chapter 1 to 4. And the Lord spake unto Moses and, the, and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever parted the hoof, and is uh, clue-footed, and chewed the cord among the beasts that shall ye eat. In verse 4, Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cord, or of them which divide the hoof as the camel, because he choweth the cord, but divided not the hoof, is unclean unto you. Verse 7 to 10. Verse 17. And verse the little oh, and verse the, seven. Verse okay, verse seven. seven. To ten. And and the swine though he divided the hoof, and be clue footed, yet he choweth not the cord, is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall you not eat. And their cankers shall you not touch. The, they are unclean to you. This shall you eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever hath finds and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, then shall you eat. And all that have not finds and scales in the seas and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters and of any living thing, which is in the water, they shall be an abomination unto you. They shall be if they shall be even an abominable unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, but ye shall have their carcasses in abomination. Verse 13, 13 to 23. 
and these are they which ye shall have in abomin abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle and the osifle and the offspring and, and the vulture and the kite after his kind. Every raven after his kind and the oil and the night off and the cockerel and the oak after his kind, and the little oar, and the com comrade, and the great oar, and the swan, and the pecan, and the gear eagle, and the stalk, the heron, and after a kind, and the lip ring, and the bat, all fowls that creep, going up upon all four, shall be an abomination unto you. Yet these may ye eat of every flying, creeping thing that goeth upon all four, which have legs above their feet to leap with all upon the earth. Even these of them ye may eat the locust, the locust after his kind, and the, and the bald locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. But all other flying, creeping things which have four feet shall be an abomination, abomination unto you. Thank you very much. Let's read also verse 44 to 47. For I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore sanctify yourselves and you shall be holy. For I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God, ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. This is the law of the beasts, and of the fowl, and of every living creature that moveth in the waters, and every creature that creepeth upon the earth, to make a difference between the unclean and the clean, and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. As you can see from here, we are looking into some of the ceremonial laws. Like our title says, sundry laws of purification, telling us that there are various laws and several laws of purification. As we come to this study, there's an attitude that we must have. In Romans chapter 15, and I read verse 4. Romans 15 verse 4, it says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime, time, were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. And so whilst these things were directly addressed to the children of Israel, there are many lessons we, as contemporary believers, need to learn from it. And we look at it from the lens of the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ for our sins on the cross of Calvary. We had gone through some ceremonial laws, and we had seen the consequence of violating them. We saw the institution of the Levitical priesthood. We saw the consecration of Aaron and his sons. And last week, like we just said, we saw the judgment that came on Nadab and Abihu for going against those laws. Here, there are specific instructions now given to Moses to transmit to the children of Israel. Let's see that in Leviticus chapter 11, verse 1 and 2 again. And you see that the instructions were given by the Lord himself. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Look at chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man-child, then she shall be unclean seven days, according to the days of the separation, for her infirmity shall be unclean. And so these instructions come directly from the Lord. And that tells us that as believers, we must always be guided by the word of God. We had seen, talking about the priesthood before now, and the temple worship. Here it comes into their day-to-day -day life what they eat, and then what you do after childbirth. And for us as believers, what we learn is that the word of God guides 
every important, every, everything in our life, and it's important, even what we consider as ordinary or general, we must be guided and subject to the word of God. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. These instructions that he gave achieved two things. One was to promote their health and their sanitary condition, the food that they were to eat. It was to be food that would be good to them. And then the practice they were to have after childbirth was to promote good health. Then also it emphasizes holiness and spiritual life. We'll come to that in more details. God also wanted them to recognize the difference between clean and unclean. And that's very important, that in everything, there is clean and unclean. And the believer must only be associated with the clean. In conversation, there is clean and unclean. In relationship, there is clean and unclean. Even in the work that people do, there is clean and unclean. And so God wanted the children of Israel and wants us also to recognize that and that we are always associated with clean. In Leviticus chapter 20, verse 25 to 26, we see also another purpose of this instruction in the life of the people. In Leviticus 20, I read verse 25, ye shall therefore put difference between clean beasts and unclean, and between unclean fowls and clean, and ye shall not make your soul abominable by beasts or by fowl or by any man of living thing that creepeth on the ground, which I have separated from you as unclean. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy, and have severed you. That's it. The lifestyle of the believer, of the follower of God, is severed from that of the unbeliever. It is separate, it is distinct, it is unique, and it is peculiar. And this was why the Lord gave these instructions. Question number one, what can a believer learn from the laws of clean and unclean animals and the purification of rights? Anyone? Quickly? Yes, my sister. God wants us to be holy as he is holy. And at the same time, he wants us to live a healthy life. Thank you very much. We're going to look at this teaching under three subtopics. The first one is classification of clean and uh, unclean animals. As you can imagine, God does not change. And God has always emphasized cleanness over uncleanness. The laws of clean and unclean animals did not just start in these passages that we read. It started long before then in Genesis chapter 7. And I read verse 2. Genesis chapter 7, verse 2. It says, Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean, by two, the male and his female. And in chapter 8, verse 20, we see when Noah came to sacrifice, it was only the clean things he brought to God. In Genesis 8, verse 20, And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord. And took every, what is the next word? What is the next word, church? Clean beasts, clean, clean beasts, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offering unto the altar. And so this distinction had predated this time, but the Lord was not defining it for the children of Israel. And the, the animals broadly divided into three categories. Number one were the land animals. And these land animals included four-footed beasts, as well as crawling animals, such as snakes, lizards, snails, and moles. And we see that the clean land animals were those that both chewed the cord and parted the hoof. Chewed the cord, they were herbivores, and then they would eat these plants, and the plants would go into their system, and it will come back, and they will chew it again, and it goes back into their system. And then they had parted hooves. Their feet, the base of their feet was parted, was divided. And like we're taught by our Father in the Lord, that shows us the importance of the Word of God. That you don't have a superficial relationship with the Word of God. You read the Word of God, you meditate the Word of God, you digest the Word of God, you allow it to guide you. And that was what made clean animals. Both chewing the cord and with parted hooves. Those that had only one element, 
they were considered unclean. The second category of uh, animals were the aquatic and water creatures. And for those ones, the clean ones were the ones that had, a, that had only fins and scales. Any, uh, any aquatic animal that did not have fin or scale was unclean. The third category was the flying animals, such as birds and insects. And in that case, the law did not give any particular description as to what qualifies the bird. But he identified about 20 species of bird, including eagle, ossifrage, osprey, kite, falcon, raven, owl, owl, and hawk. You see that in verse 13 to 19. But what we see from those birds that were determined as unclean was that they were scavengers. They ate their things. They were carnivorous. They ate blood. And then we see that a lot of them were solitary birds. They live in dark places. And so you can see that those are unclean features that the Lord did not want to be associated with his people. Then we also see for the flying insect, every flying insect was considered unclean, apart from the ones that the Lord himself named. The locust, the balding locust, the beetle, which you know as cricket today, and uh, the grasshopper. Like we said earlier, these instructions from the Lord was to show his concern for their health. And you know that the Lord is still concerned about your health and my health and uh, our general well-being. Look at that in Third John, verse 2. Third John, verse 2. As the Lord gave these instructions, he was looking at their total well-being. Third John, verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. God was not arbitrary in giving these rules. Remember, he's the omniscient God. He knows everything. And so with his perfect knowledge, and as God the creator, he excluded animals that were injurious to the health of the people. We learned spiritual lessons in addition to the physical lesson of health on this, that number one, we must be obedient to God, not only in the temple, but in our daily practice. Number two, we also learn that we should be separate from the people who are living in sin and in idolatry. Why? Because a lot of those animals that the Lord designated as unclean, the idolaters around the children of Israel, they revered those animals. They used them in their divination and in their sacrifice. And God wanted them to know that that was unclean. Question number two. What health and hygiene reasons can be advanced in support of the prohibition of most unclean animals as unsafe for human consumption? Quickly. Anybody? Any hands? Yes. The animals that have film and skill, they are the ones that are categorized as clean that we should eat. But the other ones are not to be eaten at all. Thank you. Question number three, what lessons on holiness and separation from the world does the law of clean and unclean animals teach us? What lessons on holiness and separation from the world? Yes, sir. The lessons it teaches us is that God put a difference. So we as believers must be set apart unto the Lord. We must not flow with the worldly principle, practices, and uh, pattern. Thank you very much. We'll go to point number two. Purification rites and cleansing after childbirth. In Leviticus chapter 12, I read from verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man-child, then she shall be unclean seven days, according to the days of the separation for infirmity, shall be unclean. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised, and she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days. She shall touch no hallowed thing, nor come into the sanctuary until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. But if she bear a male child, then she shall be unclean two weeks as in her separation. And she shall continue in the blood of her purifying three score and six days. And when the days of her purifying are fulfilled for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb for the first year for a burnt offering. 
and a young pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offering unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation unto the priest who shall offer it before the Lord and make an atonement for her and she shall be cleansed from the issue of her blood. This is the law for her that had born a male or a female that if she be not able to bring a lamb then she shall bring two turtles or two young pigeons the one for the burnt offering and the other for a sin offering and the priest shall make an atonement for her and she shall be clean. Here we see the purification rites and cleansing after childbirth. According to that law, a woman, after giving birth to a baby boy, was unclean for seven days and thereafter remained at home for another 33 days. For a baby girl, that woman was unclean for 14 days and then remained home for an additional 66 days. That means she stayed away from interaction with people and the temple in the case of a boy for 40 days, in the case of a girl for 80 days. And during that period, the extra 33 and 66 days, the mother was not allowed into the sanctuary. And even if she was the wife of a priest, and ordinarily she would be entitled to eat the things that were sacrificed in the temple as holy unto the Lord. At this time that she was unclean, she was not allowed. And that tells us that even if you have a title, and even if you have a position, and even if you are an acknowledged person, and you are unclean, you are separated from the things of God. As in the other dietary laws, this also had a physical, a health, and then also had a spiritual lesson for us. As you know, number one, that woman at the time of delivery, with a baby. She needs strength to recuperate. And then her immunization levels are low. And the baby as well is just building up its own immunity. And so God did not want them to be interacting at a time they can easily contract disease. And so that's the physical lesson we get from there. The spiritual is that the, the birth of that baby was unclean in itself. Why? Psalm 51 verse 5. That's for us to learn from. Psalm 51, verse 5, it says, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. The very birth of that child meant that another sinner had been added to the world, and that sinner needed to be cleansed. And the woman herself that went through that needed to be cleansed. That was the essence of that. But for us, it shows us that if you are born a sinner, you need purification. You need to be saved. And unlike what they did at that time, now what you have is the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse you. I pray that no one will remain an unclean sinner and die in that condition in Jesus' name. At the end of that purification period, the woman made an offering. She made a sin offering. She made a bond offering. And those offerings, particularly the bond offering, was to express a gratitude to God. Question, in what way can a Christian mother appreciate the atonement in the blood of Christ, both for herself and her baby? Quickly, anybody? She can do that by making sure that that baby is a uh, you know, brought up in the, in the Lord, and she herself continues in the Lord. Thank you very much. We come to the final point, ceremonial uncleanness and purification under the gospel dispensation. Now, at our own time, are we to be selecting animals, clean and unclean? I can eat this, I can't eat that, why are you eating that? No, Christ has come, and he has changed everything. I said he has changed everything. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. It says, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who had made both one, and had broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments, contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, and so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. These laws were originally made 
to distinguish the children of God, the Jews, from the rest of the world. But with the coming of Christ, that division is broken. There's only one way now to serve God, and that is by receiving Christ as Lord and Savior and following the path that he has set up for us. In fact, we do not spend our valuable time talking about clean and unclean food. What are you eating? What are you not eating? Because there are more important things to consider. Our cleanness comes now from the word of God. Look at John chapter 15 verse 3. And Christ tells us there clearly, now to be clean, it must be in accordance with the word of God. If it's in accordance with the word of God, God's demand, that's what is clean. In John chapter 15 verse 3, it says, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now our concentration is on important things. Concentration is on repentance. Concentration is on faith in Christ. Concentration is on holiness and sanctification. And as New Testament believers, that is what we focus on. In Romans chapter 14, I read verse 17. Romans, Romans chapter 14, I read verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. But we must be careful now that we are free. It doesn't mean we just eat anyhow and eat anything. There's a principle that must guide us in everything that we do, including in how and what we eat. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I read verse 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I read verse 31. It says, Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, you do all to what? To the glory of God. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Question, what should be the believer's attitude to the eating of clean and unclean animals? Somebody should help us very quickly. Yes, sir. We should be careful of what we eat and we should abstain from all appearance of evil. Thank you very much. As we round up, let's turn our Bibles to Leviticus chapter 11, verse 45, our memory verse, which encapsulates and captures the essence of today's teaching. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 45, it says, For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. It says, for I am the Lord. Is Lord, whether anyone likes it or not. The question is, do you personally recognize him as Lord? Because if you recognize him as Lord, you will accept his word unclean and unclean. It says, that bringeth you out of the land of Egypt. He had brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. And it is only by him that a man can be saved today. And then he says, bring it out. It is only by him that we are sustained. And that's why he was giving them this instruction. Even though they were out of Egypt, it didn't mean that they could just run their lives as they will. They had to listen to the word of God to stay out of Egypt. And it's important to understand that staying out of Egypt, separate from the world, separate from sin, was central to God in giving them that instruction. And he says something beautiful. He says, for I am the Lord that bringeth you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I pray that we will submit ourselves to the Lord and follow his word in all that we do in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for the search the scriptures of this morning. Thank you for the many lessons that I need. We ask for grace to be doers of the word. In Jesus' name we pray. the Lord. We have uh, listened to the Sanctus Scripture teaching today and it has been elaborately spelt out. But if there is still any question as a result of the teaching uh, this morning, we have the privilege of asking question, of uh, asking a question or if there is any clarification we still want um, 
to have more than what we have learned, please signify by raising your hand. If you are raising your hand, please um, step forward so that we can quickly see you. Okay, our sister, because of our time, let's quickly. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Please, I just need a clarification. We have learned about the clean and unclean animal that we should eat. This meat that they used to kill during this layer festive and all that. Because um, I just need, um, sometimes I ask a series of questions, but I don't get the best answer. So the meat that they kill during that festive and the drink and other things that they shared. So some people said the meat is only the meat that is not lawful to be eaten. The drink that they shared that day, you can also drink. That is only the meat that maybe is being sacrificed or they make some incantation and all that. But I just need a clarification. Is it the drink you should eat, drink, or the meat, or the food? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, let's take a question from the other side also. Good morning, sir. So my question takes on, I take my question on Acts of Apostles chapter 10, in verse 11. And so heaven... Second opened. Corinthians. No, Acts of, Acts of Apostles. Okay, Acts of Apostles. Chapter 10, in verse 11. And so heaven opened and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet Neat at the four corners and let down to earth, wherein were all manners of four footed beasts of the earth, and white beasts, and the creeping things and fowls of the, of the air. And there came a voice of him, of him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said unto, but Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Sir, my question is here is that uh, because of time, I wanted to read Jeremiah chapter 35, verse 5. Just ask your question. Okay. My question is, why does the uh, God send people like this to use all those things that uh, they don't normally eat to test them? Is it because to test their obedience towards God or what? Because we can see in that uh, that uh, Jeremiah 35 that the sons of Rechab, because they doesn't drink wine, they were tested by wine, and also here we see they tested Peter. Say, go and eat those clean, unclean animals. Thank so you that's very what much. I want to know. Yes, sir. Uh, because of um, because we need to answer some of the questions, uh, we will attend to these first two, and then uh, if there are, if there's still any time. Uh, we will see, take more questions. Our sister has asked, what should be our attitude to what uh, unbelievers sacrifice? In um, the book of First uh, Corinthians chapter 10, First Corinthians chapter 10, in verse 20, he said, But I say that the, that the things with the gentle sacrifice, the sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I will not that ye should have fellowship with the devil. In verse 21, ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of the devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the of the lost table and of the table of the devil. When we understand the rationale behind God spending time to differentiate between clean animals and unclean animals, the one that are on the ground, the one that are in the sea, and the one that fly in the air, we will know the type of love and the type of respect God has for his own children. The Bible says we are chosen generations. We are peculiar. In Isaiah chapter 40, 
4, verse 3, it says, we are honorable. And therefore, we are so special to God that he does not want us to lose our identity. And because of the sad scriptures, if you listen very well, the Lord told the children of Israel, and he made mention of unclean birds. What made them unclean? Because they are unclean. Many of them um, drink blood. Some of them eat dead animals. And therefore, the children of Israel, so precious to God, he said, don't mix yourself. Don't lose your identity. Don't be unclean. Don't be defiled. And in the same vein, in the present world, in our contemporary period, we must still be clean unto the Lord. Be ye holy as I, God, I am holy. We must not uh, in any way allow ourselves to be contaminated. Much more it is spelled out. What the Gentiles sacrifice. They sacrifice to the devil. And we cannot be part of the lost table and at the same time be part of God's of the lost table, uh, of the table of the devil. Therefore we must clean, we must remain distinct as God is, is looking at us. We are chosen. We are loved. We have been made to sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. We are peculiar before God. We are the instrument God wants to choose, I want to use to purify the world. And therefore, we must keep ourselves pure. We don't mix with them. We don't eat their meat. We don't drink their um, whatever they offer. What is the rationale behind all this thing? It is still the old story of not accepting the full sacrifice, the encompassing sacrifice that came through the Lord Jesus Christ. And they believe that if we offer this, if we do this, we will still be atoning for our sins. But the Bible says Jesus Christ died once and for all to abolish all this ceremonial thing. And when people do not believe Christ has offered the final sacrifice, then we cannot associate with them. We cannot accept what they are saying. We cannot go their own way. I pray that God of heaven will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the, in the book of um, Hebrews chapter 10, just to further explain to us, he said, in the book of, uh, in the book of um, Hebrews chapter 10, he said in um, verse 3, but in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sin every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bull and of goat should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. We cannot have flagrant disobedience to the word of God. We don't need those sacrifices again. He has broken the wall of, uh, uh, of perdition. He became the lamb of God that took away the sin of the world. And we cannot in any way align ourselves with them. We, are in the, we, we believe that Jesus died for our sin and that he's coming again to come and take the prepared saints unto himself. Now, we must not uh, lose that identity. We are priests of God. We are the workmen. Uh, we are the vessels in the hand of God. We must keep our vessel clean. We must come out from among them and be separate. So it is not just the meat. All that thing they sacrifice, uh, they are drink, they are anything. The Bible says we should, we should avoid it. Come out from among them and be separate. And that is still very relevant today. We must be holy. We must not lose our identity. Then our beloved brother has also asked that 
um, in the book of um, uh, First Corinthians, I mean, the book of Acts, that one apostle was chosen, I uh, was, uh, uh, was um, uh, fell into a trance, and a lot of these unclean animals were there. And then God said, eat, kill, eat. Now, is what is the significance of this? Of course, we must understand that um, all those ceremonial laws, they are no more applicable to us. It's still the same answer. That Jesus Christ has broken the wall of partition between us. As we saw in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, he said he has broken the wall of partition, a partition. And that now there is not, we cannot be making um, distinction between clean and unclean animals. And then of course there is something vital that God wanted uh, to make uh, to make the Jews ministers. Paul, I mean, the, 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 uh, Peter, um, John, all these were Jews ministers. But Jesus, I mean, the, the God does not want that separation between the Gentiles. They knew Gentiles to be idol worshippers. And therefore, they never wanted to have anything to do with them. But God now said, well, the Gentiles may be represented by these unclean animals, but I have cleansed them. I have accepted them. I want the gospel to also get to them. And that was exactly what um, um, Paul Apostle narrated to the other brethren, uh, the other ministers. When they accused him, why did you go to the Gentiles? He said, you don't know what I saw. I saw that God has put, it has divided the world of partition. And therefore, whether we are Jews, whether we are Gentiles, Jesus Christ died for us. He said, look unto me. In the book of Isaiah chapter 45, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 22, right from the Old Testament, God has had every man in, uh, uh, I mean, in focus. He does not want any man to perish. In Isaiah chapter 45, and then we are going to look at verse uh, 22. He said, look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, and for I am God, and there is none else. Jesus also emphasized this. He said, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into, to all nations before the end will come. Acts chapter 24, verse 14. He said, it will be preached everywhere. So there, I'm mean, sorry, Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, not Acts. Now, we must understand that this gospel of the kingdom should have no demarcation. We must not, I mean, limit ourselves. Men, women, those who are in the same faith with us, those who are not in the same faith with us, we should know that Christ died for them. He is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And that is the symbolic thing God was um, as, uh, giving because immediately after that, there were messengers from the Gentile world, from Colinius. And then they came knocking. And because God has revealed it, and the Spirit of God now corroborated that, confirmed that, he said, don't have any doubt in your heart. Go to the place. Go above all the tradition. Defile every other thing they believe. Go there and believe. And then he said, I have accepted them. And that was how the world, I mean, the world, the, the, the gospel was open to the Gentiles. And then eventually, Paul, uh, 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 Peter had to defend himself. Why he did what he did. And that is just telling us that no more unclean thing. But then, there must be something that is close uh, that to, to our mind. It's not everything we can consume. The Bible tells us in the book of First Corinthians, chapter six, we must understand that because many people will say now, uh, since they said we can consume anything, I must consider what God considered. He considered their sanitary, He considered their health, and then of course He considered their spiritual standing. Not for them to mix with the Gentiles, but their health is also very very important, and that is why Paul Apostle said. Uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 
in verse um, 12. Let's look at it. First Corinthians chapter 6, in verse 12. All things are lawful unto me, but not all things, but all things are not expedient. This thing I'm eating will leave help my health. This thing I'm eating will leave promote my well-being, will leave destroy my health. I must know if all things are lawful. I am not under any bondage. I'm at liberty. But be careful. This liberty of yours, don't allow it to be a stumbling block to others. Therefore, I can go and sit down at the idol's temple. I can be eating. There are weak brothers. So it must, the law of expediency must always be considered. Will God want me to do this? Can I just be eating anything? Can I take flies and be eating it? Because I am not under any law. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meat for the belly, and the belly for me, but God shall destroy both it and them. So I must not be too attached to anything. Or that, oh, I can eat it. And then you also need to consider your health. Am I promoting my health? Am I diabetics? Am I, do I have a high blood pressure? What are the prescriptions of the doctor? Can I just, even water, if you take water too, too much, it will start uh, working ill against you. So we must be balanced. I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. Let's rise up as we thank the Lord for what we have had this morning. Let's uh, appreciate the presence of a teaching minister in our midst that is giving us all this thing, not hiding anything from us. So that we can live a balanced life. We can live a wholesome life. We can look at our life. We can look at our relationship with God. And we can also be healthy. Let's thank the Lord for a church like this. And tell the Lord that the presence of God will not depart from us. The mercy of God will not depart from us. We will live wholesomely. We will abide by the word of God. And of course, in everything we do, we do it to the glory of God. We do it for the honor of God. We are just not, and we are not careless. We don't, we are not saying anything I can do. I'm not only at, I mean, I'm not at, a, I, I'm at liberty. Let's pray, God of heaven, we, we help us. Father, we thank you for what you have taught us today. We are highly appreciative for bringing us into your word and for not hiding anything from us. To you be the glory and honor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We are praying today that your word will be written on the tables of our heart. And we will live awesome life, happy life, a life that will prolong our years so that we can live longer to be able to do more for you in Jesus' name. Thank you for we know you have answered. Blessed be thy name as we continue, continue with us. In Jesus' name we have prayed.
Shall we rise up as we sing together? We are singing from our gospel hymns and songs. Number 220. Gospel hymns and songs. Number 220. When I saw the cleansing fountain open wide for all my sin, I obeyed the Spirit's way in when it says, Will thou be clean? Though the way seemed straight and narrow, all I claim was swept away. My ambitions, plans, and wishes at my feet in ashes lay. Then God's fire upon the altar of my heart was set aflame. I shall never cease to praise him. Glory, glory to his name. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I am so glad he took me in. He pardoned my transgressions. He cleansed my heart from sin. I will praise him. I will praise him. Praise him. Praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give him all, give him glory, all ye people, for his blood has washed away my stain.
Gospel hymns and songs, number 183. Gospel hymns and songs, number 183. Come, O oh my God, the promised seal. This mountain seen removed. Now in my fainting soul reveal the virtue of thy love. I want thy life, thy purity, thy righteousness brought in. I ask, desire, and trust in thee to be redeemed from sin, anger, and sloth, desire, and pride. This moment be subdued, be cast into the crimson tide of my Redeemer's blood. Savior, to thee my soul looks up, my present Savior, thou in all the confidence of hope, I claim the blessing now. now time for us to go to the Lord in prayer. We are going to pray. Today is the second Sunday in this month of July. And we are going to raise our voices to the Lord in prayer and tell the Lord, I mean, thank the Lord for making you part of today's service. Open your mouth and bless the name of the Lord. Let's raise our voices as we worship the Lord who has made it possible for you and I to be part of today's service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's time for tithes and offering. I'm reading from Psalm 96, verse 8. Psalm 96, verse 8. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. 
whatever offering you have brought today to the court of the Lord, please raise it up. We want to pray before you offer. Our gracious Lord, we thank you because you gave us life, you have given us all things. And here we come before you with our tithes and offerings. And we're asking, Lord, that you will first of all accept us and you will accept our offerings in Jesus' name. And according to your promise, you open heavens and bless every one of your children given to you now in Jesus' name. Thank you because we you know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please open your eyes and drop your offerings and uh, remain in the mood of prayer. We are still praying. We are praying for our nation that all those who, are, who delight in war in this nation, delight in bloodshed, delight in destruction of lives and property, the Lord will disarm them. And they will be converted in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray. We are praying for our nation. That the Almighty God will take over. In Jesus' name we pray. Prayer for our generous pretendant, our Father in the Lord. And you know that this month, great programs before us. And we are going to pray for him that the program, the GCK coming up at Obama Show this month, that as it goes about all these programs, the angelic escort will go with him. No man will be able to stand before him. Open your mouth and pray. The almighty God will go before him. God's protection before him. No man. No mountain will be able to stand before him. And let's pray that this program will be a program that will usher millions of people into the kingdom of God. Signs and wonders like never before. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to pray for our church that as a result of this evangelistic outreaches of the church, this church worldwide will experience great increase numerically and spiritually in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray. As a result of the program, the outreaches we are having, there will be numerical growth. There will be spiritual growth. In Jesus' name we pray. You are here today. I don't know what you need from the Lord. But you open your mouth and tell the Lord, whatever you ask him, the Bible says he will do. Open your mouth. Pray in the name.